Hello, so Somos. Much. We are so excited that you are here joining us for our first ever Christmas Eve service. Yeah, we are so excited that you are here today. If you are at home in the kitchen, living room, we send you a big, big hug. We are super excited for Christmas. I don't know about you, but Christmas, it's my favorite, favorite holiday ever. What about you? Yeah, same. I love it because we can eat all the food. My favorite thing to eat is actually all the sweet stuff like the buñuelos and bizcochos and all that. What's your favorite Christmas food? I have to say, okay, and big shout out to my mom, but she makes the best tamales ever in the whole world. I love tamales with a fried egg on top. That is like the best of the best of the best. Um, what about like any like, I don't know, holiday traditions that you did growing up? What's your favorite, I don't know, holiday Christmas tradition? So this tree that you guys see here, I've actually had it in my family for I think 70 years, 17, 70, <laughs> 17 years. Uh, my, mom, my mom and I were talking about this the other day and um, I just remember sitting around this tree as a little girl and um, just with the whole family and just eating and opening gifts and um, it was such a special, special time. So I think for me, I just always come back to that same memory just because as you get older, it's harder to get the whole family together there, but those moments were really special. That is that is awesome. What about you? Type in the chat, what is your favorite uh, Christmas tradition or favorite Christmas food? Uh, let us know. We want to want to get to know you a little bit better. What about Christmas movies? Are you a big fan of Christmas movies? I have to say I love Elf with a passion. That's not only my favorite Christmas movie. That is my favorite movie ever. What about you? Any Christmas? I don't know. I, I, do you like Christmas movies? I like like the Hallmark, the cheesy, like the girl finds a guy and they fall in love and it's Christmas. But I don't have like a, this is really bad, but I don't have like a, one specific but I know you love Elf because I think it was like one of our first dates he mentioned how much he loved Elf so yeah but I'm, I'm all about those Hallmark movies anybody else put it in the chat tell us which one is your favorite Christmas movie yeah, no. So again, thank you so much. If you're tuning in right now, we encourage you to uh, share the link, you know, invite some friends, family. Uh, we can do this online, which is really, really awesome. Today, our service, uh, it's going to be super incredible. We have a worship plan. We have also an incredible, incredible message planned for every single one of us. So uh, why don't you pray for us as we go into worship today? Day. Let's do it. God, I thank you so much uh, for who you are in our lives, God. I thank you that you are a good father, God, that you are our perfect heavenly father, God. And today we just come before you in this holiday season on Christmas, God, um, just remembering, God, what you have done for us. And we just thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for your faithfulness this year, God. Thank you that we are standing here today, Lord, and that we can worship you, God, and that we can come together together with our family and friends and just um, be in awe of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Well, let's go to worship. Why don't you stand or I don't know, whatever you do and um, open up your heart for what God is going to do. Hello, hello, Somos. Thanks for joining us this morning. Merry Christmas. Come on, we're going to worship Jesus. Come on, where, wherever you're at, through the screens. Come on. that flows like a river washing over me fountain of heaven earth of Christ overflowing me thank you Jesus the 
Come on, can we lift our hands to the heavens? 
Thank you, Jesus. God, you've given us freedom. We thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord. You're worthy of it all. All the praise, all the honor, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the king. This is your kingdom. Jesus Christ. This is your home, Father God. If home is where the heart is, come and dwell, come and dwell. I will open up to you. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. Jesus this morning. Come on, we're so glad you're joining us. Come on, get ready for an amazing message from our pastors. Thank you. 
Wow, what a great reminder. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, right there where you're at, why don't you just close your eyes and just put your hands out and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, because you are so, so good to us, God. If it wasn't for you, we would not be here today. We love you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Well, um, we are so excited to share with you guys together um, just something that God has put on our hearts for this holiday season. And, you know, a couple of days ago, I received this really beautiful gift that I was not expecting. Okay, my type of love language, Sergio says that. I'm all the love languages, okay? But gift or receiving gifts is one that I absolutely love. And so I got this gift and it was like a little box with like a couple of different things. But I was so in awe, first of all, that I received a gift that when I opened it, I grabbed the first thing, right? And there's a couple of people watching me and um, I grabbed the first thing and I started to look at it and I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. And I was smelling it and turning it around and admiring it in, in awe, you know, like, wow, this is so nice, you know? And, um, and the, the people that were there was just like staring at me. And I think I took a really long time admiring the first part of the gift that they just started laughing. And I was like, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful for this gift. And, um, you know, so I obviously opened up the rest of it and it was beautiful. But um, a couple of days later, I just started to think back on that moment. And it was so crazy because it was in just an ordinary moment during my day. I think I was like folding clothes or something. And all of a sudden, I, I thought back to that moment when I started admiring that gift. And, you know, um, I just felt like God started to really speak to me about being in awe. And I know that this year has been a really difficult year for all of us. Um, I know personally we've had our moments, right, where it's like, what in the world is happening? How are we going to get through this? We've had our questions, our doubts, but um, God just reminded me, and I wanted to share this with you guys, of in the middle of everything that we've gone through this year, there has been at least one, at least several good things that have happened to us. And today, this Christmas season, this um, Christmas Eve, we just want to encourage you with four different things. And the first one is to be in awe. Be in awe today of who God is in your life. Be in awe of what he's done for you. Some of you, um, maybe you're, you are going through a really rough time or thinking, how am I going to pay the bills? Or maybe it was a relationship. Maybe it was with COVID. Maybe you suffered loss in this season. But in the middle of that, you are breathing today. You are here today. And that is because of God's goodness and God's faithfulness over your life. And so today, I just want to encourage you to take some time from the craziness and the busyness and the eating and the gifts and everything. Take some time between you and God and just say, thank you, God. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you have done in my life. And with that, I want to read to you a verse in Psalms 9-1. And it says, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Today, tonight, grab your family, sit together, ask your kids, what are you thankful for? Ask yourself those questions and remember that God is still good. He's the same and has been the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. You know, I think being in awe, remaining in awe, it's such a you know, skill that we need to develop, you know, looking at things, thinking about our lives, thanking God and looking for us to remain in awe. So let's do that this Christmas. The second thing I want to talk to you about today is to remain celebrating. We need to be people that celebrate in the good, in the bad, in the middle, in the beginning, at the end. We need to always celebrate. And it might seem that it's kind of the same as remaining in awe, but it, it, it's truly not, you know. Celebrating requires 
a shout. Celebrate requires people to know that you're celebrating. Come on, have you seen someone celebrating a touchdown, right? It is crazy. It is wild, right? Or someone scoring, you know, in soccer, a goal, basketball, any single little thing, right? Like it's known. So this Christmas, I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you that at your, at your table, as you're having dinner, for you to take a moment and let your guests, your family, or if it's via Zoom and whatever ways you're celebrating this Christmas, let the people that you're surrounding yourself know that you are celebrating, that you are being joyful and tell them why you're being joyful. I think, you know, if it's on social media, posting something, right, calling people, texting people, you know, in whatever ways, but let's be people that celebrate because we're celebrating something special today. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus. Jesus. And I'm going to read the same verse that Beatrice read, but I'm going to read in a different translation in Psalms 9 verse 1 again. And it says, I will praise you. I will shout. I will let people know. I'm going to praise you, Lord, with all of my heart. Now, this is not about decision, about feelings. This is about making a decision that you're going to praise with all of your heart, that you're going to be joyful. Yeah. I will tell about the marvelous things that you have done. I will tell. Come on, tell some people about what God has done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name. Come on, let's sing, right? But joy is such a powerful thing, right? Scripture teaches us over and over again how joy literally, it is our strength. It shifts things. So whatever circumstance you're going through today, be filled with joy. Celebrate because that's going to be your strength. That's going to be your foundation. Come on. We celebrate about a whole bunch of different things. What better thing than celebrating who God is, what God has done, and in faith celebrate what he is going to do. I don't know if you follow Beatrice or Joss or myself on social media, but if you don't, go follow. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we found out that Joss and Ron, that they're pregnant, right? And man, Beatrice literally gave the biggest shout and she jumped and I was terrified, right? I was like, what is going on? But it was such a celebration, right? You can have the same excitement and celebration today about the faithfulness of God in your life. Today, you can look all over the world and thousands and thousands and thousands of people that they're not here today, millions of people that they passed away, right? So today you and I, we have a whole lot to be grateful for. So come on, let's remain in awe. Let's remain celebrating. And number three, let's remain in reconciliation. You know, I think this is one that for me personally, has been um, challenging in this season, in this time, right? With so much happening and all of the questions and the doubts and the uncertainties. And I think that sometimes it's so hard to really see God in, in, in the messiness of life, right? We're going through life and, and we're faced with challenging things and it's like god why would you allow this to happen or god why me and not them and and today i just want to encourage you to reconcile your heart with god if maybe this year has caused you to um just kind of put your distance with him because of the questions that you've had or maybe you've suffered loss and you're like god where were you why didn't you come through and um and you've put some walls up today i just want to encourage you to allow those walls to break down and to reconcile with God because God loves you so much and God wants the very best for you and sometimes life happens and things happen and and at the end of the day we cannot put those barriers from God we need God and we need to draw closer to him and so today I want to encourage you this Christmas season this Christmas Eve tonight to say God 
I want to reconcile with you. I want to draw close to you. I need you. And sometimes we need help in doing that. So today, ask him for help. He is ready, available, and he is a perfect father. He has his arms wide open for you to come in. And also, I want to encourage you with this. If there is someone in your life that maybe you have to reconcile with, or maybe it's in your heart, right? Maybe it's like you've already forgiven or you've you've had to put some boundaries and maybe those boundaries are healthy, but maybe there's just some unresolved in you about a certain person. Today, give that to God, reconcile them and uh, reconcile with them. Or maybe it's a text you need to send. Maybe it's a, a, a call you need to make to a family member that you haven't reached out to. Or maybe, you know, you've like, you're like, why haven't they reached out to me? Like I'm the one going through it or whatever it is. If there's any unresolved, give it to God and, and take the steps and the practical, right? Because we can, we can reconcile with God and we can be good. But if we don't take steps and the practical and the natural, then we're never going to be able to truly conquer some of those things that are gripping our hearts today. And lastly, I want to encourage you to reconcile with yourself. If there's something in you that maybe there's some unresolved or you're, you're feeling bad about yourself or maybe, you know, you feel like you've messed up so much this year. You could have done better or you hurt somebody. Today, I just want to encourage you. Guilt and shame are not what God would want you to feel. God would not want you to feel condemnation. So today, give that to God and say, this does not belong to me. Exchange those thoughts for what God thinks of you. And what God thinks of you is that you are amazing. You you are his son, his daughter. There is a purpose for you, even in the messiness of life. And so I just want to encourage you today to reconcile in any way. And the most important way is in God and with God. And that's exactly what this holiday is all about, right? We are celebrating. We're joyful because Jesus came to this world to open up a way for you and for me to have reconciliation with him. He made a way for you and for me to have a relationship. We literally have salvation because of Jesus. That is our fourth point today as we close to literally go up to him for salvation. I believe salvation is not only a one life uh, life event. I think that is a constant thing that we can go to God, right? I don't know about you, but I am in constant need of the Savior. I am so crazy and so wild, and I need God on a consistent basis. Again, this year has been a whole lot of ups, downs, crazy. It's been a roller coaster. And through it all, right, one of my anchors has been the salvation that I have in Jesus. That I can go up to him when I feel like I am drowning, when I feel there's no way out, when I feel I can't anymore. I can always go to him. And today... If you feel that you are at that place of brokenness, of hopelessness, if you feel that you're drowning, that there is no way out, I want to encourage you today. There's good news for you today. Jesus came to die for you. Jesus loves you passionately. You are so loved. And that's why Christmas is a worldwide event because we have a Savior. You are not alone. You have a Savior. You can go to Him. You can cry out to Him. You can scream and say, I need help. Imagine if you were in an ocean, right? And you were sinking, you were drowning, and you are desperate. And out of nowhere comes, you know, a boat and they throw you a lifesaver. They throw you a life donut, right? They throw that to you. You would literally hold on to that thing with all of your heart, mind, and soul. You wouldn't question, you would just hold on to that thing 
for dear life. And what we do in life so often is that we are at anxious places in our hearts. We are in depression, insecurities. We feel that we're drowning. The weight of the world is in our shoulders and we can't anymore. And what we do is that we question God. We say that we maybe don't like this church or that church or the theology or doctrine or we question things and i'm not telling you don't question things i think god gave us a brain but i do believe that there comes a point in our lives that we just need to hold on to our savior and that we need to just trust hold on grab on him and just get him in our life as a savior today if you need a savior, you are in good company because Jesus is right there where you are at. You can scream up to him. You can in your heart say, Jesus, I need you today. And we want to invite you today. If you are in that place, let's do that right now. Because the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that he is your savior, he is right there and he gives you salvation and he gives you a brand new life just by faith, just right now, through this message on the TV, on your phone, Let's do that today if you are at that place. Come on, just say it with me out loud. Dear Jesus, I need a Savior. I need you today. I pray that you would come to my life and change my circumstances, change my brokenness. I need you to be my life saver. Today I give you my life in faith. I'm just going to hold on to you. And I'm going to follow you. And I pray that as I do that, I will see you move in an incredible way in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And I believe that just like that, your Savior is going to meet you right there where you're at. And if you need anyone to talk to, if you need prayer, you can text this number right here and we will reach out to you. This church loves Jesus, and we are in love with him, and we are thankful for him, and we also want to let you know that we love you the same way. We love you the same way. Yes, thank you guys so much for joining us. We pray that you have an awesome time with your family, with your friends, whether it's in person, through Zoom, wherever. Make a decision today to choose joy. We love you all. We'll see you this Sunday for a very important Sunday as we wrap up this year. Love you. Love you.